Have you ever thought, wouldn't it be really cool if the county championship had an ELO rating system? It might seem strange for someone to spend their free time creating an ELO rating system, but for some reason, I've just gone and done that. Chess.com has probably the most famous ELO rating system in the world, and we've essentially mimicked it for this project. Each team starts their county championship journey with 1,000 points. The system uses a formula that may seem complex, but here's a gist. Both teams contribute points to a pot based on their ratings, up to a value known as K. In our case, that's 32, but it could be 1, 2, or 4. The lower the number, the less amount of points that's shared, and the lower the ratings. 1,000 seems pretty cool, and so does 32. The high-rated teams risk more points, while the lower-rated teams risk fewer points. If the lower-rated team wins, they gain more points, because generally they should, because they're the better team, while if the high-rated team wins, they gain fewer points. A win is scored as 1 or 100% of the points, a draw is 0.5, and a loss is scored as 0. These points are added to or subtracted from the team's original ELO rating. Gathering the data could prove tricky, but luckily we are the sponsor of this video and we have all the data. You can access the most complete county championship dashboard via our Buy Me A Coffee site, which is updated after every game. It has every game, it has extensive player statistics from 1890 through to 2024, it's got detailed ball by ball records from 2020 to 2024. You can look at player stats, bowl and batting matchups. You can look at cricket draft information. You can look at player rankings and it's all customizable. Essentially, it's the best thing in county cricket for anyone that likes data. And luckily for me, we've got the data to do this. We've got every single match result going. And to code it, I imported these files from Excel into Python, used NumPy and Pandas. Change columns, drop columns, converted the date because thanks to Excel, anything pre-1900 doesn't really work, and created a unique ID called CC underscore match, which essentially gives every single match a count. It then starts the game with every team starting on 1000 the first time they play a game. And for every single game, it calculates the team's starting ELO and end ELO based on the outcome. And then by concatenating them together, you have the date for every county's team's matches with the start and end ELOs for them and for the opposition. It took a while, but it's done. Well, almost. I started to put it together and thought, I still need to know how many weeks someone spent at number one. Now, this did take me a longer time. What this piece of code does is create a, a year, 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 slash month, month for every April to September from 1890 through to 2024. And it pulls out the ELO rating for every single team that played during that year for the last time they played during that month. This took hours to do and I wanted to give up, but the fact that it was hard and it was going to be seen by 20 people made it worthwhile. Also went the wrong way about it for about three hours. And there are some limitations. It doesn't work on the new two division system that's currently in place. It works on the good old days. 17 or 18 teams all in one division. Well, given where the county cricket dashboard supplies for county cricket, it went into a dashboard. And there's a lot of stuff. One question you're going to ask is, how the hell do I read that? Well, very, very difficult. But what I've done is I'm going to summarise what the outcomes are. So this is the absolute maximum that someone went and achieved, and it was Yorkshire in 1923 in September at the end of the year. Month number 139 of County Championship Cricket. Every month, April to September, got given a number. They are right up there. Middlesex during their 1921 campaign was right up there, 1,299. Yorkshire, the only team to go and break the 1,300 barrier. Yorkshire again appear in 1933. Essex in 2020 appear with 1,259 points, as do that really, really solid Yorkshire team with 1,245 in 2015. And you may ask who the worst is. Well, that's very easy to put together because it's Glamorgan. In 1923, they had an ELO rating of 696.95. They had started off at 1,000 and slowly but surely over time got worse and worse. And what makes it incredibly interesting is that Northamptonshire, who didn't win a game of cricket in 99 games, still had a better ELO rating overall than them. In fact, you could say it was a bit of a ropey start for Glamorgan into county cricket. They very quickly went down. And it wasn't until 1937 that they actually peaked back up over 1,000 ELO, with their absolute peak being 1,130 in the 1969 season. 
But that, after 12 months of county cricket, actual in-game months, or three years as you may want to look at it, was the bottom for them. And they soon bounced back. As soon, 1969 they peaked. It's a long way. And this table looks at the biggest upsets and biggest wins. So we've got a point change. So we can see here in 1924, Glamorgan went up against Lancashire and they won. And they gained an impressive 29.49 points during that game, which will tell you as well that that is the most amount lost in a game. Also, Nottinghamshire versus Derbyshire is there from 1921. And if we look at just this century, Nottinghamshire's victory over Essex in 2021, which may have been the win after they'd gone down that really long, uh, we don't know how to win campaign, was worth 27.52. And this is what it looks like for each team from 2000 to 2024 this century. You can see who the best is. This is the top left is sorted by the max. So Essex at 1,259 is the best. Yorkshire's 1,246. And hot on the heels... Everyone's favourite England B team, Surrey, with 1,216. But every single team at some stage, even Derbyshire just, has made it over 1,000 ELO this century. Likewise, you can see Leicestershire's 732 is the absolute pits, whereas Lancashire have never dropped below 1,000 in the last 24 years. And if you want to look from 1890 through to 2024... Glamorgan's 1,140 is the lowest maximum that anyone has been able to achieve, whereas Yorkshire's 1,316 is the best just 11 ahead of Middlesex. And Surrey have the best minimum. They've never been lower than 893. And as we said, Glamorgan, Derbyshire, Northamptonshire, Leicestershire rounding off that bottom part. And this table shows you the best rank and worst rank for every single team. Just because it's 18 or says 17 doesn't mean it wasn't the worst at the time. The average rank of where they were out the 18 teams, with Yorkshire's average rank in the entirety of 135 years of cricket, is 4.90, which is quite exceptional. And Yorkshire leading the way with 143 months of county championship action at number one. Now, those months, as I've said, don't include October, November, December, January, February, March. They only count for the seasons the championship is active, but also Derbyshire have never had a singular month at number one. But what about title changes? Wouldn't it look different? Yes, you're right. And to do that, we've had to go through some more Python code. One that I didn't plan for this video, but when I was doing it, I was like, I kind of want to know the outcome of this. So what we did, we created another table. And this takes the last month of every single season and gives us the rankings for every single team during that last month of every season. And by doing so, we can see that Surrey have finished first, finished the season with 31 times being ranked the number one team. Yorkshire 21 and only 17 teams appear because Derbyshire have never done it. But this would mean that Somerset would have one title, as would Northamptonshire if it was done this way. And then importing the season tables, which is available on the Cricket County Cricket dashboard, we can see that actually Yorkshire had the most, then Surrey, then Middlesex. Derbyshire do, in fact, have one title. So then putting them together, we can see that Yorkshire actually lost 11 titles doing it this way, whereas Surrey went and gained 9, Sussex gained 8, Essex gained 5, Lancashire lost 4, and Middlesex lost 4 as well. But what is interesting is real winner count for North Ants and for Somerset both went up by one. Do we think this is a good way to do it? Well, the fact is, all of these years had changes from the real winner being Surrey and then the number one rated team being Somerset based on ELO ratings. You may say it didn't quite work. 47.20% of the year title changes were effectively changed. We've just stripped Surrey of their last two titles because Essex's ELO rating, because they've been good in those seasons, hasn't actually dropped down that much. And Surrey, to be fair, are coming from a really low point in 2010-11. Even to the point pre-COVID, they were not quite the team they are now. 2021, they dropped down to almost 1,000 ELO and are now on 1,198 and are the number one ranked team. Overlaying that with Essex, you can just see the point this year where they've made that transition to being number one. So is it a good way to do it? No, it's not. But it does help you identify peaks and troughs through the years where teams have been great in eras uh, such as the 1920s Middlesex team, the 1960s Yorkshire team, and Surrey and Essex and how far they are above everyone else as part of the game 
since 2021. Very clearly see them at 1-2, but Hampshire have gone and snuck the number two spot with Essex having a little bit of a bad run of form. And the disparity between this system and the one that we use to, to create a rating out of 100 is quite different because Yorkshire's team of the 1920s ranks in the top 15, but Surrey's team of 1892 is the highest, followed by Yorkshire's in 1939, according to us. Also for us, very clearly states that Surrey is the number one team, with Essex second and Hampshire third, but this works on a three-year revolving window, with the third year only being worth 50%. I will put a link in the description for you to access this dashboard, and you can have a play around. But for any Middlesex fan out there, it does make some pretty bleak reading. Their 1933 team had a rating of 977, uh, 936 in periods, but dropped off to an absolute worst in 2010, and unfortunately, they don't seem like coming up anytime soon. And Leicestershire, in 2015, had their worst ELO rating of all time, but are currently on the rise, but have spent the majority of their time below 1,000. And that will do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments down below what you would do differently. There are lots of things you could do different with the ELO rating, and what you think about it, and if there's any real big surprises. Likewise, is there anything you want to see with us next? We're quite often on Twitter doing random things with Dara. We'll see you soon.